Over the next six years, we will provide every child in school in South Africa with digital workbooks and textbooks on a tablet device. In the Sonar speech last year, um, Cyril Ramaphosa made promises about providing iPads to every foundation phase learner in South Africa. I thought that was one of the scariest things I've ever heard. I think it is an um, enormous irresponsible way, enormously irresponsible way to spend money on resources for foundation phase children. And I'm talking specifically foundation phase children. So this is children from five years old to about 10 years old. My name is Mrs. Kulati. Kevston is a, it started in 2016 with great arm. It's a Christian school. There is church upstairs. From the experience that you have now, if you give them books, they, they will tell you tomorrow, I forgot it at home. Yo, Mrs. Kulati, yo. They have stories. If you can keep them at school, it will be a good thing from our experience, because they will not, especially with I, I, iPads, because they want, they will need them to, to, use, the, to use them at home. We would rather keep them in the school and use them in the school. And there will be more time for us to, to facilitate and look at each child in the classroom using the machines. And they enjoy, I know, for my daughters, I know, from my grandson, I know from them. Others say they, they, they bring phones to school and they must, must write letters to the parents and say, no, not at the school. But if you can introduce that, it will be a formal thing and official one now to use in the schools. Because the focus here is the child. Everything we do must benefit the child. We will take us most and train us how to do them. Me also, as, as old as I am, I'm willing to learn. We want new things, we want to be like other countries, to do new things, especially for the children. I've, I've went through this exercise at the fee-paying school, um, my former school at PJ Willie Field, and there's pros and there's cons. In the previous chapter, I was a school inspectress in Port Elizabeth, uh, an education development officer slash circuit manager. My focus on, on, again is on the developing of technology that supports teaching and uh, learning in schools. We're also looking at different approaches that people can use to integrate technology in schools. We obviously, I believe technology is the, is, the, is the way to go. The barrier is, and the challenge we're having, and I think most schools are having, is the infrastructure around the technology. A teacher's an iPad and they don't know what to do. It will sit there and it won't be used for the use they're supposed to, to benefit the children in the class to improve the literacy program. The hardware, for in other words, the tablets, the laptops, which have to be updated to accommodate the different types of programs that we put on and the graphics cards and everything that's always got to be updated so we make sure that you've got to have the, the latest um, hardware and also the software, um, there's a cost involved, but most importantly is the infrastructure to host all the technology, for example, the, the Wi-Fi or the data, and that becomes very expensive. And in a school like ours where we have phenomenal resources like Wi-Fi, the top quality in the, in the world, if that, you know, our resources are phenomenal, so it's an easy sell to a school like this, saying, buy our iPads and your kids can access everything, you know? But does the pedagogy come with it? Do they bring the support for the staff? Is there a vision to, you know, to actually measure its success or not? As you understand that technology involves different stakeholders, it's not about just having a school and the principal is enough to run a particular school. It requires different stakeholders. And there's a lot of stakeholders um, involved that's very good for the school. So, in most of our classes, we will have data projectors. We've got Wi-Fi. So it's more or less used as a learning tool, which is fantastic, which is much easier to, 
to access and to show uh, real life pictures and, and up to date news, but to use it actually to do testing, to exams, to mark scripts, uh, to self mark, all those type of technologies has to be taught to staff. I think the use of technologies in classrooms and exposing children to technology from a young age in the right way is actually really, really important. And it's something, this is why we have a bank of iPads as one of our things on our wish list to be able to use in our school. And we would use it. But again, I've got a problem with, with Wi-Fi facilities, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if the government uh, will be so lenient and um, help um, the, the poor people in the townships with um, Wi-Fi, etc., then it can make a difference and it will be something new for the kids. And the problem with the technology is that it's a global trend phenomenon that there's this almost a fear of getting left out or, you know, so these schools are all jumping into it without actually any evidence or research that supports their learning process to show that it, this technology is actually going to enhance the learning process. So my small task that I've been given is to actually assess whether or not it does enhance the learning process or not. Um, and just doing all the academic studies, looking at it, there isn't a lot of evidence that exists. I mean, iPads only came into education in 2010. So where it becomes very, very expensive for our, our boys, our, our learners, to access um, the internet or this, the World Wide Web because they, they lack the, the data or the infrastructure at home. You can um, experience it firsthand. You can take it away from the school. But giving out a laptop to a teacher does not fulfill the need of the teacher. There are certain things that we need to consider, like I've talked about the context that they're in. Give a teacher a laptop to teach in a classroom where they don't have even a projector. How will the teacher be able to teach yeah, I think they've got to look to see how they can bridge that gap with the infrastructure. The potential for teaching science and things with these is mm. phenomenal really. I mean this is just a math subject that we've come up with where their kids are doing, this is grade four, they're doing probability. Because it's something new, um, the kids are definitely interested in it. And there's lots of pro programs that you can download on it. Um, in our IT centre we use Reading X, um, we can use Kami, uh, Maths, um, other reading programs that you can download. So you can basically, with, in the absence of the teacher, you can learn yourself with basic programs, elementary programs, to elaborate on your reading, your maths, etc. Built everything that you see here, they've made. So they've made their written stories come to life, effectively, like a movie, if you know. Something, just very basic things to think about, is the fact that young children are still developing their fine motor skills, so their small muscles. And if they don't have enough time in class to write, then those muscles actually are not strong enough to be able to sit down and write a three-hour exam paper when they get to the trick. Children are writing very lightly, they're not pressing very hard, and, and that could very well be a, a, a sign of they're not writing enough. It's more swiping than writing, and, and, and that also does not bode well. On the other hand, we are, we are teaching a generation, a class now, that we don't know what their future holds. The other challenge we face in, in schools is the training of staff to make sure that they can use technology to teach it properly. Um, at the moment, most uh, teachers use it as a, as a, a learning aid, a learning tool but uh, not really to teach um, using technology. Uh, sometimes you feel overwhelmed just going into a workshop and you must be taught. A lot of our teachers do not feel confident using technology. They do not feel confident even using laptops. So bringing iPads and tablets into the classroom is going to make the teacher feel um, unsettled, not confident. I don't want to be taught in front, uh, there's lots of young teachers also and you also feel inadequate because you don't know how to use it. We were one of the first schools in the country to jump on board to this iPad program. So we kind of were setting the way and I've quite clearly said that we're a failure. An example of a failed integration model, whereas we may have had a strategy but between the handovers of IT heads, we've somewhere the ball got dropped. 
And now we've kind of carried on with the, this program without actually implementing it successfully with all the steps that we planned on doing. And now all these negatives are cropping up of the, the kids misusing the devices, they're becoming non-educational distractions and effectively the staff resistance to them, you know. There's this stigma now associated with them and I, I don't blame them because I, it's not like I can say to teachers, well, here's the evidence that if you use the devices properly, they are going to make your lessons better. There is no such thing at this point. You see that um, the, without training and without meeting the needs of the teachers in the process of integrating technology, then we are creating a big digital divide within the, those that have and those that do not have. So it will widening up the gap. And this will continue even affect the learners itself. It boils down to training. Training of staff uh, to use it correctly and to teach with it correctly so that it, it assists the, the learners uh, to use technology in everyday life. So the approach that we are using to integrate technology in schools it's becoming a problematic and it's also being politicized in the end. And it is empowering instead of empowering the teacher and the special also the learner themselves. So the biggest problem would be that schools jump into a program like this and they don't train their staff or don't develop a vision and they effectively become substitution tools where the goal is actually to redefine the learning activity so for example, let's say I'm doing angles and maths and the kids are learning what a right angle is, what an obtuse angle is. What I can do with technology is I can take a, a robot, a Sphero, and I can get them to drive it and draw an angle with the robot. So that's instead of just replacing a worksheet on the iPad, I've now redefined the task so that they're applying their skills in a real practical sense. I mean, that's the value of technology. What are the needs of a teacher in urban school? What are the needs of the teacher in township? What are the needs of the communities? What are the communities' view in terms of integrating technology in these schools? If we understand those views and integrate them together, it will enable us to create a good approach that can support effective integration of technology in schools. And learners will be able to appreciate also the use of technology in that context. What is he doing? Drinking. 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 It is an absolute prerequisite to have the material paper resources like graded readers and big books and um, library books and libraries that are being used on a regular basis. Once all of that is in place, then iPads would be useful in order to um, add to the curriculum and add to what the children are doing. But in no way is technology going to solve the literacy crisis we are in at the moment.